So, so far we've seen how to calculate the surface area of a surface that's given parametrically. But usually, what we want to do is, is to find the surface area of a graph that's given by some equation. So we have, this is a surface. Uh, what, is the, what is the surface area? How do we find this? Okay, so this is over some over some region in the x y. Let's call that region D in the x y plane. Well, there's actually a very simple solution. Remember, we know how to do this in case that our surface is parameterized by two variables. So is there an easy parameterization of this kind of surface using two variables? Well, we have x and we have y, and f is determined as, as a function of x and y. So we could write this. r depends on x and y. The x value is just x. The y value is just y. That's the y component, I should say. And then the z component is a function of x and y. So we can certainly do this. This is a, a, a way to parameterize, in rather a trivial way, the surface z equals f of x, y. The reason we do this is because we know how to find the surface area for things that are given parametrically like this. And how do we do it? Well, we first take the x derivative. And we're going to work this out because things are going to simplify. You see here, the x derivative of y is 0. And then the x derivative of f as a function of x and y is just the f sub x of x, y. And we want to take the y derivative of this. So we take when we take the y derivative of x, we get 0. The y derivative of y is 1. And the y derivative of f of x, y is f sub y. Okay. Now, we want to know the magnitude of rx cross ry. So that's the magnitude of this determinant. Okay, so when we take the rx is 1, 0, f sub x. ry is 0, 1, f sub y. We're here, rx, ry, fx, and fy all depend on x and y. Okay, so we're finding the magnitude of, well, in the i direction, we get 0 times fy minus f sub x. And then in the j direction, minus f sub y minus 0. And then in the k direction, we have 1. Okay, so that's the, that's the vector of which we want to find the magnitude. And the magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares. So the x derivative squared plus the y derivative squared plus 1. That's it. Okay, so, so this expression actually turns out to be very simple. And in this case, so if z equals f of x, y is a surface, um, then the area of the surface over some region D, let's say, is, well, surface area As we know, it's the magnitude of, in this case, Rx cross Ry dx dy. And we computed this. So this is the square root. The square of the x derivative plus the square of the y derivative plus 1. That's it. dx dy. So instead of carrying out this procedure, 
in case you're given such a function, z is a function of x and y, and you want to know the surface area over some region d, you can just go straight ahead to this formula. Let's do this in an example. Let's see, find the part, find the surface area of the part of z equals 2xy inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 9. Okay, so the area, immediately we can write down this, this thing. So there's some region D. And here, what is our f of x, y? Well, z is equal to a function of x and y. This is, this is our f of x, y. So we have to take the square root. The formula says take the x derivative of f. So that's 2 times y. And square it. Then the formula says take the y derivative, that's 2x, and square it, and then plus 1, dx dy. Now this is supposed to be inside of the cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 9. So what we can do immediately is to just project the cylinder into the xy plane, because x and y are our variables. So d here will be this disk. Circular disk of radius 3. Okay. Now looking at this integral, how on earth will you compute it? Well, we'll have to use the techniques of section 12.6. Because this integral is intractable in these coordinates. But, since we're integrating over a circular region, and we have an x squared and a y squared, which together will give us an r squared, it looks as though we can change this into polar coordinates. So theta will vary from 0 to 2 pi, r will vary from 0 to 3, and then this will be the, the square root of 4y squared plus 4x squared is 4 times r squared plus 1, and here dx dy becomes the r dr d theta. So we shall make a substitution. Again, we have an inside function that is 4r squared plus 1. Let's call that u. So du is going to be 8r dr. So we can divide by a constant in this equation, not by a variable. So r dr, which is what we have here, is du times 1 over 8. And because we have a definite integral, let's change the bounds. So r goes from 0 to 3. When r is 0, then u is 1. When r is 3, then u is 4 times 9 plus 1. Okay, 37. Right, so let's go ahead and, and make this substitution. So we leave our theta integral as it is, and then here we integrate from 1 to 37. The square root of u, and then r dr is just 1 8 du, d theta. Okay, so we can carry out the integration. When we, when we find the antiderivative of u to the half, it's u to the three halves divided by the new power. And we still have an eighth in the denominator. This must be between 1 and 37. d theta. Okay, so once we plug this in, this is independent of theta, so you just get a number. And when you find the antiderivative of that, it'll just be that number times theta. And then theta will be valued between 2 pi and 0, so this just amounts to multiplying by 2 pi times this number you get. So, so you'll get 37 to the 3 halves over 3 times, and then 2 will divide out here to give you 4, minus 1 over 12. And that's the answer.
So I mean this three three times four is twelve. Well we could divide out the two, so let's just do that. So we get pi over six times thirty seven to the three halves minus one. Because here we have twelve in the denominator in both terms, we could bring it out front and divide by two. Okay, so that is our surface area. Notice that we didn't have to go back and work out everything in terms of our original formula. Now we will use instead the second formula. You can just remember this without having to work it out in each case. And we use that directly. We took the x and y derivatives of the function f of xy, squared them, added them, and added 1, took the square root. That's the formula. And then integrate over some region in the xy plane against dx dy. Okay. Thank you.